My name community, my name is Nick, and I'm here today to talk to you about liquidity mining. And to our Japanese community, Minisan, Kanichiwa, Itoshiwa, Nikores des, Kai Shinishato des, Hiroshu, Anigashumas. Today, we're here with Carlo from Hummingbot, and we're going to talk about liquidity mining. Carlo actually wrote the first white paper on liquidity mining, so he's, he's, the, he's a great person to be talking about this. So, uh, Carlo, would you like to give us a bit of an introduction? Hi, uh, great to be here. Um, so we recently announced a partnership with them, as Dick mentioned, so we're really thrilled about that. Um, so what it is, is par a part of that partnership, uh, we're launching a liquidity mining campaign for Zem tokens, uh, starting on November 3rd, 2020. So what the liquidity mining campaign would do, it, it will reward uh, traders or anyone who market makes for Zem tokens. So I think over the past few months, uh, it's been really popularized in the DeFi space. Um, but, but the difference between our platform, Hummingbot Miners, is we provide liquidity mining to centralized exchanges. So in our campaign with Zem, uh, for Zem tokens, it will be a liquidity mining campaign for traders on Binance.com. Uh, and also just to provide an overview, um, so because our liquidity mining uh, is, is on centralized exchanges, it's a bit different from DeFi, which is based on automated market makers. In our version, in order to provide liquidity on centralized exchanges, it's, you'd have to do so in the traditional way of trading. So what I mean by that is by creating orders in order books. Um, so over time, so that's actually quite, uh, it, it's a bit different in that, uh, in order to do that on centralized exchanges, if you want to automate that, you know, it's best to use like a trading tool. So that's where our, our, our piece of software, uh, Hummingbot, which we created, which is an open source trading bot um, that allows anyone to market make automate their trading. That's where that comes in. So, in, so it allows users to basically uh, make markets uh, based on uh, simple strategies that it can create. And I think in, in this video, we'll walk Nick through that and show you how, how you can get set up on, on using Hummingbot and participate in liquidity mining. Awesome, awesome. And just at a high level, for someone who's simple like me, what is liquidity mining? Sure, uh, good question. Uh, so basically our concept of liquidity mining and the DeFi one, uh, the overall objective is the same. So it's basically finding a way to compensate market makers for providing liquidity. So I, as um, the problem of liquidity in, in the crypto markets is one that's been existent ever since it pretty much started. So uh, why we need liquidity is we want to make sure tokens are readily available, tradable, uh, that uh, users can trade in and out of them uh, and access them, uh, make uh, tokens when needed. Uh, the problem is uh, before this kind of uh, liquidity mining developed, um, typically token issuers who wanted liquidity or exchanges who wanted liquidity, they'd have to pay like market makers, sophisticated market makers, hedge funds to provide that service. Um, so that didn't make a lot of sense because it's really costly and there's also uh, not feasible for a lot of other token projects. So what's recently happened with, with DeFi and in our platform as well is we've kind of tried to make it uh, democratize market making. So for the first time, these are kind of experiments or initial, initial technologies that aim to allow anyone, so the general public, to get involved in market making. So what liquidity mining does, it tries to create a framework to compensate market makers. So in, in the DeFi space, as uh, many of you are probably familiar with, um, it, they compensate liquidity providers for folks who provide assets into smart contracts, which can be used for, for, uh, for trading. But in our version, uh, um, our market makers are basically traditional traders. So people creating orders, putting them in order books that allow uh, anyone to, to trade. Um, and then what both of our kind of frameworks do is pro provide a way to uh, offer with token rewards, or, or to users who, who contribute to liquidity. Cool, cool. And, and so, you know, the thicker the order book, the less volatile the asset. So really, you know, traders in the NEM community who want to see a more stable, um, stable asset by, by helping um, liquidity mine will actually reduce the volatility in the order book. Uh, and what I really like about it also is it, it really fits into the decentralized sort of nature of crypto as, you know, rather than having a centralized body market make as, as traditional assets do and, and, and as crypto has had for so long, where you can give that, that, that responsibility back to the community and, and those behind certain token projects can ensure order book depth 
and liquidity in the asset that they have faith in and want to see grow. So it's great. It helps, it helps the whole ecosystem. Uh, so I'm very excited to learn how to do this. Um, how, how do we do it? Sure. So, so to first get started, um, so the liquidity mining campaign that we're running for Zem is on Binance.com. So in order for a user to participate, they would have to set up uh, or use their existing Binance.com trading account. And then on there, they'd have to have some amount of assets because obviously for market making, for creating orders, you will need some assets. And so you'd have to have first go to Binance.com, set it up, uh, fund it with some level of assets. And then from there, um, we can use Hummingbot. So Hummingbot, I mentioned earlier, is our open source trading software. And so what that does is, uh, so if you wanted to market make, technically you could just do it on the, on the exchange. So you create orders um, on the exchange and adjust them over time. Um, but obviously that's inefficient because uh, it's, uh, the markets are open all the time. Uh, the market moves quite a lot. So you'd want to automate that. So we created Hummingbot, which is open source trading bot that allows you to market make and automate your trading. So you could just specify config, configs, which we'll demonstrate in this video, uh, how to do that. And then that will automate the trading over time. So you don't have to manually do it or continue uh, uh, creating uh, in orders. Um, but in order to do that, so Hummingbot, it's software that you would uh, run locally or run on a cloud server. Uh, and in order for that to interact with your trading account, uh, you would first need to set up some API keys uh, on your Binance account to give it the authority to, to trade. Cool. So uh, I've gone ahead and set up a brand new Binance account and funded it with some crypto to specifically for this process. So um, I guess I'll share my screen and we can go from there. And so while Nick's setting up his screen, I just a uh, quick overview as well is uh, for um, for Hummingbot, my, Hummingbot trading bot, we'll, we'll be creating two uh, kinds of API keys. One is a trade enabled API, API key, which we'll use for the Hummingbot itself. And then the second one, uh, which we'll discuss later for Hummingbot miners, uh, we'll create a read-only API key. So uh, we'll create both of them um, and they have two separate purposes, which we'll, we'll describe here. But as you can see um, here on, on Nick's account, so he's already funded it. So he has some amount of uh, Zem and some amount of Bitcoin as well. So he'll be uh, setting up the bot to trade uh, Zem Bitcoin pair. And so to get started on uh, uh, setting up the API, API key, if you go to the top right, where I think under the, the icon of the user, there should be an API um, management section. Right. Uh, here you can just give it a name. So here um, you can say uh, trades. Humming uh, yep. Yep. That's fine. Okay, so email verification code. Send code, please. And the so you also notice here, you also notice here um, when you set up an API key, you will ha need to have 2FA uh, enabled. So Nick has already gone ahead and done that. But if it's your first time setting, uh, setting up an API key, it will ask you to set up 2FA first. Great. So I have my API here. And um, I've got a key and a secret key. I'm guessing I want to keep this secret. And I don't want people reading yes. this. Is that correct? That's correct. So this basically gives authorities, anyone who has this can trade. And you can also see here, there's restrictions set. So uh, what this key can do is they can read your data. I mean, it's also enabled for spot and margin trading. Um, so with this key, uh, you should copy it. Uh, also one other thing to note, the secret key, uh, it only shows you that the first time you create the key. So if you, if you forget to copy it for whatever reason, um, you, you will not be able to recover that. What you'd have to do is set up a, all new, a, a whole new API key. Okay, and where should we store the keys? Like, is, is, there, it's, is it a similar concept to the uh, public and private keys uh, with, with crypto wallets? Yeah, it, it is. It's a similar concept. Um, I think here, because you can, uh, uh, you can configure the restrictions. So obviously the, the risky part here 
which is not enabled is enable withdrawals is not is not ticked off. So that's uh, at least that's one level of protection. Um, but here, obviously, because it allows you to trade, you wouldn't want um, some hacker randomly trading your assets. Um, mm. So here, yeah, you could go ahead and copy this uh, somewhere locally. Do I want to enable spot and margin trading or? Oh, yes. oh it is enabled, uh, is it? So, yeah, it is enabled, yeah. So b by default, the API keys are created, are, tra are enabled. So there's one. And then there's two. Okay, okay, so I've got my API keys. What comes yeah. next? And then we'll actually make one more. So this this step is not required for Hummingbot, the trading bot, the, but this be for the uh, Hummingbot miners, the Houdini mining platform. Uh, so they're, they're kind of separate systems and we'll, we'll explain that as well. So okay. in order to set up a second API key, if you go to the top, you just create uh, a new uh, label. So you could call it Hummingbot miners or read only um, and give it a name. So we'll go through this process again of verification. Cool. So copy and paste these again. Yep. Uh, I guess one thing to do here. So because by default it makes its trade enabled, so you would click uh, edit restrictions. Where's that? Edit restrictions. Yep. Take this off. Yeah. And then save. Exactly. Yep. Great. So important step, everyone. Remember to edit the restrictions on your second API key. Oh, let me just get this reset. Great. And so, here again, yep. Yeah, um, same as last time. Just make sure to copy the uh, the API keys. Great, so I've got my API keys copied over. Now what do I do? Great, uh, so that's pretty much uh, uh, all you need for now on the Binance. I guess we can next move on to installing Hummingbot. So uh, there's a, a number of ways to do that. So if you go to the Hummingbot homepage. Yeah. Um, because it's software that you run locally, there, um, uh, uh, you basically have to download it. So. The one, one way you can do that is just here. You can actually download the software files directly from our site. So if you hit the download tab. Download. Yep. And then for Windows, I'm guessing. Yep. Uh, you, uh, yep. You could click on the one for Windows or whichever one's appropriate for your yep. operating system. Yep. Um, also, just to note, uh, other ways to install it, you can download the source code from GitHub. You can also uh, use Docker. So for, for some of the more technical folks, uh, Docker is typically helpful if you want to run multiple instances. And also because, because it's a trading bot, typically you'd want it running 24 seven. So that's why for a lot of users, um, they prefer to run it on like cloud servers. Um, and so that it's always available. Yeah, so this is actually something I was, I was interested in. So if I want to run a bot, I mean, obviously the, the more I liquidity mine, the more I'm going to mine, i.e. the more rewards I'm going to have. So if I want to run run my Hummingbot, I either need to leave my computer on 24 seven or I can run it off the cloud, right? That's right, yep. Okay. And there's actually one other, one other um, alternative. A lot of our community users use it and we actually use it for testing. Um, we, we even run it using small computers like Raspberry Pis. And we found oh. that's actually a pretty, pretty neat solution um, because uh, the, the computational resources for, for running Hummingbot are not that heavy, so it's not like a mining node. Um, you only need something like each instance takes like a few hundred megabytes of RAM, and CPU is not too intensive. Great, great. So um, I've downloaded my Hummingbot. Um, should I open this file? Yep. I guess while you're doing that, uh, one thing to mention here: uh, when you download it locally, uh, because we have it registered with, say, the apps, the Mac Store, or it's not registered. A Windows program, uh, you may need to just uh, 
override the security settings. So I think that's what uh, Nick has to do now. Yeah, I, I, I just did that while um, it was, while yeah. we were stop sharing screen. <laughs> so, uh, so I've got Hummingbot set up here. So I'm gonna run, run the uh, setup. Um, I'm going to agree to your license agreement. But yep. I've actually it's just your read... standard Apache open source license agreement. Oh, lovely! I was going to say I read it. I read the whole license agreement before the call, so I'm confident to to press the I agree button, um, and we'll install it. So while that's installing, how did you uh, come up with the idea of liquidity mining? Yeah, good question. Um, so basically, we. We started off uh, our company as a, we were running a quant hedge fund. So we were using different uh, machine learning uh, to trade in and out of Bitcoin Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, but as, and we were pretty entrenched in the crypto fund community, also knew a lot of token issuers. Um, this was back in 2017, uh, mid 2017. Um, but we realized that one of the biggest problems in crypto, which everyone's aware, I think even to today is still uh, there, is liquidity, um, mm -hmm. just a lack of liquidity. Um, because it's it's a new market, it's so volatile. And one of the problems is that there are so many different tokens assets out there, and there are so many exchanges that the number of 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 traders or market makers who can service and provide liquidity is just limited. They can't keep up with the number of markets out there. So that's why we kind of uh, thought about first of Hummingbot uh, finding a way to open source and bring market making to the general public, um, and then also. But now that if, if you give everyone this capability, well, how can we like harness the ability for the general public to market make, to provide liquidity? So that's why we, we're kind of thinking all nights, how can we incentivize a group of folks uh, to coordinate them to do uh, something specific? So that's how we kind of started thinking about liquidity mining. Um, and it's kind of how do we um, uh, organize a group of actors that are willing to contribute, to participate uh, and receive rewards for it. That's kind of the origins of, of the Humming Miners uh, platform. Great, great. Well, I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan. I'm, it's very much needed in the market. So, um, you know, I'm glad that you guys came to that decision. So uh, it looks like I've just downloaded my Hummingbot. Um, what's, yep. what's the next step? So now if you go to your start menu, it should appear there. Um, yeah, there it is. So you just have to search for Hummingbot. Okay, it looks like it's open. And I'm met with a black screen here. Is this what I'm, is this what, what I should be doing? Is this it, should, it is a, it oh. is a command line terminal program. There. Oh, there, so it just took a while to load. So you, you'll see here, um, it is a command line based uh, software. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, typically the best way to run it is on cloud servers, things like that. Yeah. Um, so currently we don't have a GUI, although that's in the works, but for right now it is a terminal only. So you can hear, you can click through OK. Or hit enter. There we go. Should I read this carefully before using the Hummingbot? Yes, definitely. So we do have some, um, some uh, disclaimers here. Obviously, uh, anything related to crypto and trading is risky. So we wanna make sure that the users uh, do take precaution, understand uh, what, the, uh, take some steps to, to understand uh, the risks of what they're doing. Um, so you can click okay here. And one other note here as well, just a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, when we guide Nick through setting up the bot, uh, we'll, we'll use some sample um, configurations, but this is not financial advice or, or investment advice. Just keep note of that. Um, we do have a community of traders on our Discord channel. So you're more than welcome to chat with our community if you want to find out more about risks or, or different trading parameters. So we have a community to discuss that. Um, and we also have a series of blog posts, which we call Hummingbot Academy which is intended, we're putting out articles on risk management, investment, all the different concepts. So that's a good resource for folks who want to learn more about trading, algo trading, uh, market making. Great, great. So here we are, set a secure password. Um, yep. Let's do this. 
where my password will be nice and secure and hidden from the public, even though this is on YouTube. No one try and hack my hummingbird, please. Okay. And, and one thing to note here as well, um, because it's running locally, so um, that's why, uh, so you basically you're in charge of your own security. So you make sure, uh, one of the reasons we chose to have it open source for people to run, um, it's open source because um, it does require sensitive information such as your API keys, or if you're using trading on DEXs, your private wallet keys. Um, so that's why uh, it, it runs locally so people can control their own security basically. Cool, cool. And, um, you know, we're going to be running this on Binance today. Um, but, you know, say someone in the NEM community wanted to run it on uh, another exchange. Uh, is, that, is that something that they could do um, on their own with this software or? Yeah, so they can. Um, so we currently have uh, 14 exchanges that it's integrated with. Uh, some of them are uh, decentralized exchanges as well. And we're con always continually adding more and more exchanges to, to the, to the bot. Cool. So here, I guess uh, we can actually see here. Uh, so the first step, uh, so now that Hummingbot's up and running, uh, the first step will be to connect it to one of the exchanges. So one of the commands you can see and uh, on, on the screen on the bottom left is kind of the input terminal. So yep. you can, you can type in to start like say connect and then hit enter. And that will list actually all the exchanges that are available and, and show you which ones are connected to. So you can see here, um, you don't, you're currently not connected to, to Binance. Um, and so to get that connected, you would just type in connect and then space. And then one thing here, you see there's an auto fill. So you can see the available options whenever there's, there's questions, uh, uh, it will autofill what available options there are that are valid. Yep, so simply hit connect finance. And enter. And enter, yep. So now we have to go back to the notepad so you can enter your API key. Great, so here are my early prepared API keys. So the first one. And then here, I think to copy, to paste, you might need to hit control shift V. I think or whatever you just hit. Works, unless this looks like it didn't work okay. to you. It works? No, that looks like it worked. Yep. Cool. Sometimes. So just to know some, yeah, some, watching, you may need a control shift V. Yeah. If control then, doesn't work. Great. So if that worked, then you've hit enter. Okay. Now the, then secret the second part. There we go. Cool. Uh, so now you see you've entered your keys. Uh, what Hummingbot has also done is also verified that they work. So if you hit, if you type in connect again, um, and just hit connect, enter. Okay. Oh, we can see that we're connected to Binance. Yep. Very good. Yep. And, that, and, that, and that it's also confirmed that the connection is working. Right. So the next step is to create a, a new strategy, a, a configuration. So yep. you would type in create. Oh. Enter. And then hit enter. Yep. And then you'll see as we're configuring the strategy um, that it's, it's basically a step-by-step. -step. You'll be prompted certain questions and then and then whenever you have questions like this, uh, if you want to hit tab, uh, that will show you what options there are that are available. Cool, very cool. So arbitrage, clear arb, cross exchange, market making, and pure market making. Yeah. So yeah, we're so in this one, this one or? Yeah, so, so these are the four built-in strategies that are currently in Hummingbot. Um, so the one we're going to use for Hummingbot miners because um, it's the one that basically it rewards based on orders created in order book. The most appropriate one is market making. 
And market making is also the, the most used strategy as of right now uh, that most of our users use. Although obviously uh, some of them use other strategies as well, but pure market making is what we're going to start with here. Cool. So um, do I, what do I type in now? You can uh, use arrow keys to scroll down, or if you start writing, typing in pure market making. So what, if you type in pure P. market making, and I use the yeah, arrow keys. It will auto -fill. Fill. Can you confirm? Yeah, that that's work? fine. Pressing yeah. enter. And then here, um, so we're going to use Binance. So you just enter Binance. And then even you'll see also once you start typing, uh, it will start autofilling uh, the responses. Lovely. Love, love autofill. And then here, uh, so you're going to be choosing which trading pair you want to trade. So then you could type in Zem. I see MBTC. Oops. Yep. Do my. Okay, how and far then next, mid price? Yeah. yeah, so these next two questions are basically your bid and ask spreads. So this one is your bid spread. Uh, so it's basically how far away from mid you want to place your, your offer to buy, your order to buy. Uh, so in this okay. case, we can use, let's say, just we can use 1%. So that's probably quite a wide market, but just for yeah. demonstrations purposes, we can, we can see that. But just before we uh, get into doing that, um, can we just clarify what bid and ask is, what a bid ask spread sure. is and what a mid price is. Sure, so basically um, when you have an order book, um, and maybe we can show the order book on, on the Binance screen. Um, sure. we, we basically, uh, on a centralized exchange, so it's called a central limit order book exchange. So if we go to back to Binance, go to exchange, and then we, if we look up the, uh, the Zen BTC pair, uh, it will show what the order book does is basically a collection of orders from from the market. So it's it's a, a number it's a aggregate uh, indications of orders to buy and sell. So here's uh, our Zem. order book here. Yep. So you, you can see here on the the bottom the green are bids. So these are offers for folks to buy. So the best one right now is that that uh, zero 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 one zero six six. Uh, and, and there's 1,105. Uh, so what that means is uh, someone or a group of traders have collectively, uh, there's a total amount of 1,105 Zen tokens to offering to buy at the price of uh, let's say 1,066. Uh, and then on the ask side, on the red uh, above, uh, that's where people are offering to sell. So there's an aggregate about 16,651 uh, offering to sell at a price of just triple or quadruple Zero one zero six nine. Um, you can see here that offers to to buy are lower than offers to sell. I mean that that makes sense. Uh, and then uh, the mid market is basically the average. Um, so those those two orders that I mentioned, they are called the best bid and the best ask, because the best bid is the the highest price anyone anyone is willing to pay, and the best offer is the lowest price someone's willing to sell. Uh, and then the mid market price is the average of the two. And that's, that's used as a reference for basically where the market is. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, and yeah, so, and so the bid spread is basically once you set the reference price to the mid, uh, so how much lower do you want to offer? And so basically for market making that how market making works is you know, how market makers try to generate profit, um, is by setting their bid bid prices lower than their ask prices. So they're offering to sell at a lower price and buy at a higher, uh, sorry, they're offering to buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price. And over time- I like, um, they, I like it, it's a good strategy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and over time, that's how they generate profits, but try to capture that, that spread. Okay. So essentially what our bot's gonna be doing is going to be putting in orders lower in the market book away from the mid price and then putting once that order is executed putting an order in higher in the order book above the mid price uh and thickening out the order book but also once they execute yeah. we should make a small profit on our um market making yeah i think uh, well actually it, it it creates both or bid and ask at the same time so you're basically uh creating uh, the offer to buy and sell at the same time and, and the goal is ideally is you want to be uh, basically buying and selling 
equal frequency. So okay. when, whenever um, you buy, uh, uh, when, whenever say your bid order is, is, is filled, uh, you're not always guaranteed that the sell order will be filled at the same time. So that's actually one of the risks of market making is because you're basically creating orders and giving options to the market or allowing people to trade on your orders. Um, you actually have, have some risk of uncertainty. And so that's actually why we have a number of features to, to, perfect, uh, to kind of mitigate or protect against that risk. But basically um, there, is, there is some risk around that. Okay, okay. So there are, there are risks to be aware of with this. It's not a simple straightforward process of letting a bot buy low and sell high for you. Um, and, and I guess, you know, if someone's new to this whole concept of liquidity mining and market making, um, what, what are some good resources they can, they can sort of read or is there like sure. a forum they can access? I know you mentioned earlier there's a Discord. Uh, what would you yep. recommend just to make people comfortable um, with the whole concept of, of market making, bids and offers and mid prices? Right. Yeah, so we have a number of resources. So we have uh, on our Discord, the forum to chat, but we also are putting out a series of blog posts and we also have some as well. So you can just access that on our, on our website, hummingbot.io. We have a blog section uh, and we also have a YouTube channel um, as well. Uh, so you can, if you search for Hummingbot on YouTube, we have a number of videos explaining like what's market making, what are the risks associated. Right, right. So um, the website- And one other thing, sorry, one other thing I mentioned is, one other thing I mentioned as well is uh, Hummingbot actually has, we have a, uh, what's called paper trading mode. So we definitely recommend uh, folks who are new to that. What that is, is you can configure the bot to trade, um, but it will only replicate trading. So it actually will not use uh, any crypto yet. Um, so that's one way to get started without actually putting any crypto at risk. Um, the other way as well is obviously when you get started for the first time, uh, we'd recommend users to start with smaller amounts of, of assets to play around with because um, so they can just test out the bot, see how it goes with a smaller amount of, of, uh, of crypto before, uh, and then once they're more comfortable on how it kind of works, then they could, they could increase uh, the amount they use for trading. Cool, cool. All right. So we've, we've set up um, our Hummingbot. Uh, we've connected it to Binance. We've input our private and public, well, our secret and public key. And we've put in our trading pair and we're up to the point where we need to indicate how far from the uh, first bid do we want our bot to be operating. Yep. And, and, and in this case, it's kind of, um, so uh, bid ask spreads are kind of dictated by how liquid a market is. So if you have a very liquid market like uh, Bit Bitcoin, USD, USDT, mm -hmm. uh, I think the bid ask spreads are something like point zero like one percent so it's really really small and obviously the, the wider it is um that means that it's, it's, it's less liquid um and usually for for assets that aren't trade as much um these spreads are are, are wider um and and when we mentioned earlier how, how market makers kind of generate pnl they try to capture the bid ask spreads because um because uh, less liquid assets are more volatile uh, and are a bit riskier from a trading perspective that's why you see the spreads typically wider in that case. Um, so in this case, for demonstration purposes, we could just enter um, some, 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 some spread. So we can see, actually we could try like say 0 0.5. Great. So what that means is like, uh, it's uh, the mid price, which is calculated from the order book. Here it will set your bid price as 0.5% lower than what the mid price uh, reference is. Yep, then you can just uh, click enter now. All right. And then here it's going to ask the same, same question, but this time for the ask side. So here we can use the same as well, uh, 0 0.5. Uh, so that will basically create your sell order at 0.5% higher price than the mid price reference. Cool. And how often do you want to cancel and replace bids and asks? Uh, so here, typically, um, I, I, a lot of our users use something between 30 seconds and 60 seconds. So this is basically how frequently it checks prices, updates them, and you know, replaces orders. Okay, okay. And so, you know, if, if I've got this on, uh, say, 30 seconds, uh, will it update after 30 seconds and move my 
bid and offer to be within 0.5% of the mid price or what, what's the relation yes. there? That's what I'll do. Okay, yeah. great. So, yeah, yeah. So every 30 seconds or whatever value you put in here, that's our frequency where it will check in what's the current mid price. If it's moved, then it will, uh, you know, uh, update the prices and create new orders. So it will cancel the previous ones if they weren't filled and then it will create new ones. Right. So I've put in 25 seconds here just so we can get a live demonstration on this video and rather than leave okay. our viewers waiting 30 seconds. Um, sure, and sure. what's the, what's the amount I should put in here? I suppose it's sort of, is, is there a, is there a right amount and a wrong amount or how do I decide the right amount for my account? So, so, so good question. So what you see here, there's a minimum that it indicates. So what this means is, uh, so Binance and exchanges, they may vary, but they have a minimum order amount. So typically you're not able to create an order that's less than $10. So 10 US dollars equivalent is typically the minimum order size. So here uh, the minimum in Zem is 102.9, which corresponds to roughly the $10 uh, US. Um, so here, in terms of what amount you want to trade, this depends on kind of how, how, how big your, your asset base you're trading and also how, how much risk you want to take. So here for demonstration purposes, we can use something like, let's say a 200. So just to give it some cushion that you're not gonna um, fall below the 200, uh, for, yep. fall below the 102. Um, and here, uh, so ping pong feature, we could know for now, but there are a number of advanced features um, which you can read more about on our, on our, on our website. Um, so, um, so it, what we, in the, in the basic walkthrough, this just has the basic parameters to set to get started. So that's the easiest way to get started. But we do have additional advanced features that help you customize the strategy a bit more and help manage risk a bit more. Great. So do I want to do the ping pong feature here or is that something I should read up on first? Uh, probably read up on first. Um, okay. Yep. So we'll just sit and know for now. And just quickly, like, on the, on the um, amount per order. Uh, and does this re like relate back to the rewards I would get from liquidity mining? So say if I was doing, you know, 2000 ZEM instead of 200, would that equate back to more rewards from the liquidity mining pool? Yes, definitely. So the way uh, uh, liquidity mining or something about miners works it kind of looks at three, there's kind of three parameters that it looks, like, it looks at. So, well, one is time. So um, basically how how many miners distributes rewards is every minute we take a snapshot of all participants' orders. Um, and, then, uh, and then, so we kind of see uh, that, that way it allows us to distribute rewards over time. So if someone uh, continues to place orders over an extended period of time, they'll get to accumulate more rewards because they're, they're eligible for more and more minutes. Um, the other kind of two factors that are involved are uh, how tight your spreads are. So the tighter your spreads are, the more rewards you earn. Um, and then the third point is uh, what you just mentioned, Nick, is the size. So the larger your size is, uh, the more uh, rewards you get to earn as well. Um, and we kind of did that, that that way because Basically, the rewards are intended to compensate for risk for market makers. So obviously, the more uh, consistently they place orders over time, the more risk they have. Uh, similarly, like the tighter their spreads are and the larger the order sizes are, the more they're risking. Uh, but on, on, the up, on the flip side though, uh, it's, while, while it's the risk for the market makers, uh, for the general market and the order books, that's actually helpful. So the tighter, the, the more consistent orders are, the tighter spreads are, the larger the sizes are, the more easily someone who wants to trade can trade because it facilitates that. So that's why we kind of reward for that because we want to make sure we kind of promote better liquidity um, and we reward for that market makers because for them, it, it does translate into a more risk for them. Okay. All right. So I've clicked uh, enter on no, oh, and I've done it wrong. So would you like to use ping pong feature invalid? Please choose value from true, yes, y, or n. So I can just go n. Okay, it seems like it's putting an o there to start. Let's see if this works. Am I, am I doing something wrong here or? Um, 
Uh, yeah, I think just just put N O. Oh, I think, no, I think was, you may have. Okay, it it auto filled. It had auto filled. So if you're watching at home and you have the issue I had, just make sure it has an auto filled. So there we go. No, and now it has okay. worked. Yeah. Right. So, so now was, you. Yeah. yeah. So now it's just asking you to save the file. So uh, whenever you set up a strategy, it, it saves the the them into configuration files on your computer, yep. uh, YAML files. So that's, it's asking you just to name that here. Okay, so do I click enter or? Yep, you can hit enter. So that's basically it. Um, I would just say before, before you hit start, so it's actually ready. So if you hit start, it would actually start trading already. Mm -hmm. um, but before we do that, I think a few other things to note. Um, if you, uh, a few other useful commands here. Uh, if you did, if you do it to start, if you type config. So before I hit start, type config or press start and then. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, actually, you can do it start first before you get starting. Delete. Before you get start start chain. Yeah, do it oh. start. Okay. Uh, if you hit. Deleted. Yeah, if you can try uh, entering config. So if you hit enter. Um, that will just show you a summary of the parameters that you set on the bot. So this is typically helpful just to double check the inputs that you, you, you entered, or if you're loading up your configuration um, that you saved in the past, this helps you kind of review um, the parameters you set. And you also see here, there's a lot more parameters than mm -hmm. we, we walk through. Uh, um, those are related to kind of advanced features. Yeah. Um, so we definitely recommend users to, to look more into that. Um, for example, some of the more, more useful ones for risk management are things like uh, inventory, inventory SKU. So mm -hmm. what that does is it tries to balance your inventory so that you're not, um, so it, it adjusts your orders to try to maintain like a, let's say, uh, let's say a 50-50 uh, split between uh, base asset and quote asset. So in your, ca in your case, uh, between Zem and BTC. And, and the reason you kind of want to do that is you want to, kind of avoid big swings in the inventory. So if markets are volatile, you basically you say you don't want to have 100% of Zem when the price of Zem is falling or the other way around, or oh, sell out right. of all your Zem uh, when prices oh, are right. rising. So that helps you kind of manage that as well. Right. Um, other really good safety features as well, if you if go to the top, um, there's a kill switch enabled and kill switch rate. So um, in the global configs, even, even higher. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so what that is, is um, it's, if, if ever, I guess there's two ways folks use this. One is like um, typically it's used as a safety. So if you set that to enabled, if, if at any point in time, the bot, let's say loses, let's say five or 10%, whatever mm -hmm. you set it to, it will stop trading. So if, if for some reason the bot's uh, incurring losses, the kill switch will, will stop the bot once a certain threshold is reached. Yep. And that's kind of a safety feature. Also, some users use it the other way around so to lock in profits. So you can set it as a positive value. So yeah. like if you save 5%, so if you bought trades and accumulates a 5% gain, then it will stop it to try to kind of just like uh, capture the gains. Okay, great, great. And do I edit these like here or how do I exactly edit all of these functions? Sure, good question. So we could uh, demonstrate it here. So if you hit config uh, and then space, and then you enter the parameter name, then you can uh, change that. So here you could put in, like say kill switch or so enabled. Kill switch enabled. Yep. And then hit enter. Then you just type yes. And then the other part of that, so there's two parts that config, config. you have to also, yep. uh, set the kill switch rate. Okay. So, so you hit config, config again. again. Yep. And then space and then kill switch rates. Yep. And so here, yeah, you, you, you put in your threshold. So you can use something like minus five, per five. so minus five, which equals um, 5%. Okay, minus 5%. Is that right or is it just five? Oh, no, not, not Oh, just five, minus five. So not okay. percent, yep, that's right. And if I wanted to do it as a strategy that would take profit, I could just go like five or would it be plus five? Yep, 
Uh, just five, like that. Just five. Without okay, well, I'm plus. quite optimistic. So I'm just going to put it as a as a take profit rather than a stop loss. Right. So, <laughs> okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. So that's that's pretty much it. So you can see um, just with a number a few configs, you basically configured the bot to run. So the next thing you can do is if you, you type in start and it will start trading. All right, the moment of truth. So let's press start. And, and you'll see on the right, it's going to start logging what it's doing. So it's initialized the order book and then it's connecting to Binance and then there it's created two orders. Right. Um, so you can actually see if you go back to the, the Binance website, you actually, you should see your orders uh, showing up there. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So just like that, you're already creating orders. You can see, uh, I think we put 0.5. Okay. So you can are. see. There's one and there's two. 0.5 exactly. from the mid price. And now I've thickened out the order books. Uh, I've helped in, uh, add liquidity to the NEM order book and I should be rewarded from for this, right? Yes. That's right, nice. And in 25 seconds, are these going to, to update or? Yep, it, it will. Cool, I think I saw it just, just move before, but I mean, let's see. Yeah, so it should, um, after 25 seconds, it will take a new mid price and then yeah. refresh the orders. So you well, should see it cancel and update. Um, you can also verify, you can see on the orders, there's a timestamp on them. So you should see that all over time changing. Yeah, okay. It's a long 25 seconds. You know, maybe it's one of those things when you look at it, you, you don't watch an egg boil. Yeah, actually, actually one thing, if you, if you go back to the bot, because um, sometimes, the Binance UI doesn't auto refresh. Mm. Um, oh, okay, actually here. Oh, so there's this order refresh tolerance. So basically um, to prevent you from unnecessary canceling and replacing orders here, because the mid price actually didn't change um, from in that 25 seconds, yeah. it didn't cancel the orders. Okay. Um, it's, okay. it, uh, yeah, it doesn't maintain them. So you can actually see it's logging here uh, because the mid price didn't change, there's no point to like cancel and, and replace them. Okay. Well, um, just for the sake of this, should we should we buy some them change the mid price? <laughs> sure. Let's see. Let's see. So we will buy them, and hopefully, no one no one else comes in here while we're doing this. Uh, mid price stays the same. Oh, yep, there you saw it just yeah. refreshed. Great, lovely. So we can see that the uh, that the uh, bot's working there. Um, so is there? Is, so I just leave this running now, or yeah? So work? you can leave it running. Um, other useful tips: um, uh, you could actually uh, integrate it to your uh, Telegram, so you can connect it to your Telegram, so you could actually monitor, so you get ping messages when there's trades or whenever anything happens. Sure. Um, other useful functions while we're here, uh, if you type in status. So status will show you the current state of things. So it shows you like how much uh, inventory you have, what's the current mix, and also what orders um, you have outstanding. Right. And how do you to Telegram? Uh, so there's a, there's, a, there's a three Telegram configs. So if you hit config again, it will show you um, those, those, there's like a input you'd have to create. You'd have to create a Telegram bot. So um, we have instructions on that on our on our website. So you basically have to use, if you're familiar with Telegram bots, there's like the bot father. You'd have to set up a bot, okay. and then it will it will provide you a uh, token, uh, and you also have to get a chat ID, and that's how you would um, basically set that up. Right. Okay. But it would begin with looking at your website. There'll be some sort of manual there. And at some point you'll yeah. have to config telegram um, on this dashboard here. Yep, that's right. Cool. And also uh, one other uh, useful thing here um, while we're here is uh, one frequently used command is history. So if you um, type in history. So, 
So right now um, it hasn't traded, so it says no past trades, but once the bot does start trading, so when the orders are filled, it would show that over time. And another thing here is it shows you kind of performance. So it shows you how your bot's doing um, and some basic stats on, on how it's performed since, since you, you, you started it. Cool. Cool, so um, we've got starting price, current price, no delta, trade delta. So delta is, is the difference, right? But what are we looking at? Is this the difference uh, from, from the spot or what exactly is the delta? Uh, so for the first part is the, um, is the, the inventory assets. Uh, so it's, it's showing the, from when you first started the bot until current. So here, I think the reason that it is showing like a net delta is because I, I think that's, that was the trade that you, you manually uh, triggered. So it's showing that since you started the bot, there was a change in, in assets. Um, what trade delta is, that is basically the amount of Bitcoin and, and Zem that's changed because of, because of uh, the bots trading. So for example, if you had bought some Zem, the mm. trade data would show a negative value for Bitcoin and it would show a positive value for Zem mm -hmm. because uh, the trading resulted in, in a change right. in your balance. And if I turn the bot off uh, and then turn it back on, will it reset or will it keep this, this data here when, when, um, when it's working out the delta? Yeah, so it, it will actually keep, 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 that data, uh, keep that. So if you stop it, uh, and start, it will, it will keep that because it's actually the trades are stored locally on a database within Hobbybot. So you have that data. Okay, great. And um, okay, so we can see our market pair here. So could I run this on XTM BTC and XTM E at the same time yep. or one or the other? I could. Yeah, you could. Uh, you could. So you, you can. Um, uh, so you'd have to set, run a, a different instance. So you'd have to uh, actually. Um, run another installation of Hummingbot to do that. Um, so if you want to run multiple bots, um, you would have to run different instances because uh, Hummingbot itself only supports one instance of trading at a time. So that's yeah. why um, one uh, easy way, typical way for folks to do that is if you use something like Docker, um, so uh, which is, uh, helps uh, you more easily run multiple uh, instances at the same time. Okay, and so two questions on that. Um, I, would I have to set up a new API if I'm running a new bot? I know. So uh, it, you can use the same API for, uh, for multiple bots. Okay, great. And, and, and what is Docker and where would I get Docker? Sure, good question. Um, so we have a, f f a good number of resources on that as well on our website. So Docker is kind of like, it's a, it's a container uh, system. So basically, what Docker is, it runs like a whole like container within computers. What I mean by that, it's kind of like a comprehensive, it has operating system built in. It has the whole kind of installation, uh, installation within, within the container. So what that means is like here you saw when you, when you um, installed it, you had to run setup EXE. What Docker does, it's already like a, a container. It's, it's already installed um, and you just run it from there. And you have to install Docker for uh, for your computer, um, and and once you have it, once you have that installed, uh, we have some commands where you basically uh, enter some terminal commands, uh, and then which will spin up, spin up the spin up the uh, the instances of Hummingbot. Okay, okay. So and again, we could we can find that information or, or some sort of guide uh, in your Discord channel or on your website. Yep, it's on our it's on our website and also our Discord channel. We have. 24-7 uh, support. So if anyone needs help setting it up, um, we do have support there. Uh, they, they're happy to help. They've guided many users through this. I think one thing to note is um, it's a, a lot of our users are not engineers. They're not the developers. So they're not that technical, um, but they're interested to kind of learn more. And we, right. we, that's why yeah. we have, we, we, yes. yeah. yeah, that's why we've actually spent a lot of time making sure our support team and our support infrastructure works really well to help f uh, folks get onboarded. And we've successfully onboarded hundreds of users who have not used, not used command line before, not used Docker before, not used terminal. Um, so we've definitely uh, been able to, to teach a lot of them how to, how to use that and get set up. Excellent, excellent. So you get to learn something as well as potentially 
uh, making a profit and picking out the NAM order book. So it sounds, it sounds good. Uh, so, so we're running this now. Um, is this all I do? Like, uh, ideally, I'd have this yes. on a cloud or on Docker, or where? where yeah. Where so, so what's the next step? Yeah. So, so right now, um, you can see this. Like, right now, when Nick's running it, uh, he's running it on his own computer on his own account. So, us Hummingbot, we we have no idea what he's doing with it. Um, so, the next step is, if in order to participate in Hummingbot Miners to earn rewards he would have to configure that. that. So if he goes to our, our miners app, which is miners.hummingbot.io, he would actually have to register um, on there. Okay, well, I think I've got this one here. So I so, yep. here or? Yeah, so here, you can see here, um, this is our, our, our app. Um, it shows like, the current programs that are, that are running current campaigns that are running right now. And it shows the participants and, and the yields offered by the different token pairs. Um, so to get started, uh, if you click on login, I think you need to register on the site. Uh, I think you, uh, you might have to hit sign up on the bottom. Oh yeah, good idea, yeah. good idea. You know, Like a bull at a gate there. So just a note here, um, because because again I mentioned we don't actually know any data that um, that's being created or how Hummingbot's being used. What this platform does is it requires users to input a read-only API key. So that's why we um, asked Nick to set up the read-only API key earlier, and then he would input that into um, Hummingbot miners, and that allows us to to get his order data for the purpose of determining the rewards that he's, he's earning. So if you go back to the original tab, um, so by signing up, so basically he had to enter, input his email address um, and send him a confirmation email, but now that he's logged in, um, now he's on the, the site. Great. So, uh, so you can see, yeah, so he's, he's currently in the settings tab uh, so you can see there to connect uh, Binance, uh, he would just connect, uh, click on the connect Binance. And then here I, I add in the, the other keys I copied? Yep, yep, the read-only API keys. So now it's now it's connected. Um, for first-time users, it would probably take between like half an hour to an hour to actually get registered on our system, because what our system does is it, it will start tracking the order information. So it would take some time to collect that, and it's also because it's tracking many users' data at the same time and processing it. Um, it will show up on our our miners app after roughly about half an hour. So now now, now that he's set up. Um, uh, if he's participating in any eligible campaigns, he would start earning rewards right away. Um, right now, uh, the Zem campaign is actually not starting till November 3rd. So right now he's not earning rewards, but once the campaign is up, he would start earning rewards um, on that one. Cool. But, but I, I guess just to, to potentially still like, you know, make some profit from the market making uh, in the meantime, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so to note, there's, there's kind of two, two, two um, sources of gains and losses or profit. So one is this one um, for how many about miners? We're paying token rewards based on orders created. So that's separate. So the bot itself, in the course of its trading, is also generating profit or incurring losses. So that that's kind of separate. Um, so one of the rationales here for for participating in how about miners is that you're earning an additional income stream. You're earning additional token rewards. So that helps you increase your profits if you're earning profits or if you're incurring losses on the bot, it helps minimize those losses. Uh, um, and so it's another way of just kind of uh, incentivizing you to, to participate. Okay, great. And it's also, it's also an added utility to the token. So if you want to hold the yeah. token, um, you know, you can liquidity mine with it. Um, whilst having exposure to it 
um, you can also earn some some sort of profit or you know loss, whatever. I mean, well, if there's profiting from the mining pool, isn't there? But there's a there's a market risk, which could there could be a profit, could be a loss on the actual market. Maybe. And and actually, while we're on this screen, one other thing to note here you see on Connect Wallets. Um, so this is actually where uh, the rewards you earn are sent to. Um, so right now um, we don't have Zem on there, but the liquidity mining campaign for Zem will pay in Zem tokens. So closer to launch in the next week or so, uh, we will have that Zem on here. So in order to do that, you'll see under Connect Wallets there will be a Zem row, yep. um, and, and then you just click on that, enter your wallet address, and that's that's where the rewards will be sent to. So it'll be one of these, there'll be a NEM option here. Yep, cool. that's right. Okay, so is that how, is that all I need to do on the uh, miners.hummingbot page to register my, my bot? Yep, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then, so you can also just track it after that. So once the campaign is live, um, and then just to maybe walk you through some of this site as well on the, on the top, um, yep. you can see, uh, what on the dashboard tab. So once you're earning rewards, it will show up there. Um, so it will show like uh, each minute, like what the rewards you've earned are. Oh. Um, and also there'll be a summary of payouts history. So the rewards are paid out each week. So each reward period is a week. So that's why you can see uh, on the top, there's time remaining and payout. And so each uh, reward period lasts one week and then they're paid out uh, after that. Cool. And then we've got performance here. So is this, is this the performance of the bot, is it? Yeah. So here, um, so this shows you kind of the words you've earned and also it pulls the, the P&L that the bots uh, incurred uh, right. over the course of trading. And so obviously the, the, the P&L of the bot um, will vary a lot with sort of market volatility um, or, or will it? And, and second to that, um, you know, what type of rewards can I expect to earn um, from the mining pool from running a humming bot? Sure. You can see right now, if you go to the, the, the markets page, so for the, for the Zen campaign, there will be a, a reward pool of like um, $5,000 equivalent in Zen tokens per month. So you can actually see here. Um, uh, so you can see here, uh, we have a column called yield. Um, so this, this, this shows you like basically the wards referencing the amount of liquidity provided at the moment. So you can see they're, they're quite high at the moment. Um, so 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 what this if I run a bot on Cody EMB pair, I could expect to earn a 430% reward a year. As of right now, yes. Um, so basically the, and how that's yield is calculated, it's kind of, how much is the, what amount of reward pool uh, versus compared to the liquidity? So the liquidity column we have here shows like the total amount of orders uh, for that pair. And so what the yield is, is a measure of rewards compared, reward pool compared to the amount of liquidity in these, in these uh, trading pairs at the moment. Okay, okay. And so actually, if you, if you click on one of them, um, you can actually see even more detail on how that's kind of calculated. So you can see here for the Koti BNB, um, the weekly rewards are 250 USDT, um, and that's why that's why you can that's why the returns are so high. So you can see 250 uh, per week, and the liquidity right now is somewhere between like 2600 to 3700. Uh, so you can see how that that gets to a pretty large number pretty quickly, and then. Uh, no, no, I was going to say, I, I imagine, is there like a relationship between, you know, this sort of gamifies, gamifies the, uh, the humming bot? I mean, which pairs you want to support? So I imagine there's some sort of relationship between like a higher weekly reward value and the number of users um, who, who are helping market make. Is, is there a relationship? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so basically, so the, the reward is fixed. So you can see here for this pair, it's 250 per week. So what that means is the more folks participate, then uh, the more they have to sh split the rewards or, sh or spread the rewards across those participants. So what we actually seen is a lot of our miners are pretty economical. So I think like 
what if there's if yields are are very high for one pair versus the other ones, a lot of them will tend to migrate to that one as well. So it's kind of equal, equal uh, to some degree. There's some, some level of equilibrium that's being set. Okay, and you know, is there a way I can get updated on on what the rewards are? So say if the weekly rewards change, if they get larger, I might want to sort of come in uh, with with a greater yeah. sort a size on my bot so I can try and capture more of that. Is there a way that I get updated um, from that? Yep, so we typically send out, uh, so on our doc site, we have the most up-to-date terms. Um, also here as well, uh, you can see that. Um, but when we do have changes, we will announce them on our Reddit or Discord. Um, and also, uh, yeah, you could sign up for our, our email as well uh, for updates for this. So there's, yeah, so you can get update. Um, but actually, while we're here as well on the screen, I'll just also point out a few more things. So you can see each snapshot is, is per minute. So th that's what I mentioned earlier, is that uh, a reward amount is being distributed each minute. So you can see here uh, the most recent minutes. And you can also see the number of bots that are participating in that snapshot. You can see the weighted average spread across all the bots. So for this market, roughly around 1%. Um, then the, the rewards per day. So that's basically that 250, uh, but per day. And the yeah. liquidity, what the liquidity is, that's basically the amount of orders that are captured uh, within that snapshot. So that's the number of you know, orders that are sharing that, that uh, reward uh, for that particular snapshot. And, and is that um, just Hummingbot orders or is that um, uh, like market orders from third parties as well? Uh, this is only only for the folks participating in Hummingbot Miners, ones who've registered um, and have input their API keys and that, that are sharing and eligible to earn rewards. Great, great. Cool, so we can see 17 bots here, but I'm guessing that's likely because of the $250 reward. If it was 250000 maybe we would expect uh, 17,000 bots or something like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we've had, so we've had, we've had, um, so our platform, it's, uh, we've had a number of issuers run campaigns. We've had a um, number of them start, stop. Um, some of them uh, generated so much liquidity that they stopped running uh, the campaigns because uh, at some point uh, there's so much participation that they no longer needed to reward folks because there's so many traders uh, trading them already. Um, so we've seen the stats vary. So right now we just rolled off a few campaigns. So I think like we're probably in the low end of participation right now. Um, I think like, but as we announce them, I think definitely we think we're really um, op optimistic that a lot of our community, uh, our community as well as NEMS community will participate in this and we'll see uh, pretty pretty good participation stats in that. Well, you know, we're, we're very keen to get our community involved. You know, I, I think sort of a lot of decentralized projects, they start off centralized because the ownership of the tokens are, are with the founders, but over time, for a project to truly be decentralized, the founders need to give those tokens to the community somehow. And if the community wants to work with us to, to help uh, increase our liquidity, we're very keen to, to help sort of reward them for that. And, th and that's why, you know, we really wanted to work with you guys on this because, you know, if people want to support them, they should be rewarded in them. And uh, this is the perfect yeah. platform to do it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so we've definitely seen a similar similar motivation behind between the AMMs. So the likes of like Balancer, Uniswap um, that have also have these liquidity mining uh, platforms, but obviously theirs is uh, based on smart contracts. Ours were able to extend that concept um, to centralized exchanges and to its tokens that are not, not on say Ethereum blockchain. Mm. So we're definitely thrilled to, to be working with them on, on launching the campaign for your community. Yeah. Right. So, so we've gone through setting everything up and we've registered um, on the Hummingbot Miner page. Uh, so that's basically everything I need to do to, to run this, right? Yep, that's, that's, you're basically up and running now. Um, one thing to note, just over time, it's good to just you know, monitor your bots. I think one thing is um, you, you do need to just uh, be mindful that make sure um, if things are changing the market, you just have to pay, like, make sure that if you have to adjust them, that you, you're, you're on standby to kind of do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. From and, time to time. And you know, 
by sort of chatting to people in the Discord and reading some of the materials you have there, I can sort of tune my bot to be, you know, to fit my risk profile and, you know, say I have a certain view of the market, I could reflect that in the bot. Yep. Right, right. Yeah, so you can definitely customize it. So even, even just simple things like, for example, if the market's some simple concept, like if the market's for some reason extremely volatile, generally it's good to try to widen your spreads. So we have functions like you, you, could, you could actually change your spreads while the bot's running um, it, to do that. We also have a, a lot of customizability. So we have one script feature um, where it will actually uh, adjust how wide your spreads are based on volatility. Oh. So there's things like that, like that are a bit more advanced, but helpful. Um, but I think to get started, you don't need that. But over time, it's good to uh, know what it is um, and possibly uh, try to experiment with it as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, that sounds, that sounds really handy. So, I mean, just once again, like if I have issues setting this up or I, I want to learn more about this stuff, I can access you guys on Discord. I can read manuals on your website. Um, is, there, is there another way I should be reaching out or they're the main, they're the main two? Yeah, th those are the main two. Um, we also have a YouTube channel with some tutorial videos as well. Great, great. And just in general, if I want to keep up to date with, with you guys, you know, you've already said that we can subscribe to a mailing list. Um, and, and we've already discussed a few channels, but is there like a Telegram or a Twitter that we can follow as well? Yep. Yeah, we do have Twitter. So we uh, post a lot of our announcements there. Uh, we don't actually have a Telegram channel at the moment. Uh, we definitely, a lot of our community is, is just uh, uh, basic on Discord. Okay. Okay, no worries. And so what, it's, it's just humming, Hummingbot is the handle for the Telegram? Uh, for, uh, for Twitter, it's a Hummingbot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hummingbot underscore IO. Okay, great. Right, hummingbot. hummingbot Twitter is actually like uh, an AI camera of humming, hum, like hummingbirds. Uh, so the, uh, the, hummingbot, the Hummingbot Twitter handle without the IO is like some uh, some videos of hummingbirds feeding on some kind of bird feeder. Yeah. Right. So that's definitely not us. Yeah. Very peaceful. You know, maybe I could put that up in the corner while I'm trading uh, you know, and keep me nice and relaxed. So, um, Carlo, I think, I mean, is that, is that everything we sort of need to cover to, to liquidity mine on them? Yeah, I think that's it. I think um, the other few things, I guess just a reminder is uh, we're hosting an AMA for NEM. So if any folks have any questions, they can post that to, to the NEM official or to the Hummingbot.io Twitter. And then um, just to recap as well, we are launching the campaign for ZEM tokens on November 3rd. Uh, so definitely there's some time between that for, for the NEM community to learn more about Hummingbot, get ready and set up for that. And definitely reach out to our community on Discord uh, if you have any questions or need help uh, getting set up. Right. And just, just a quick thing from me to the NEM community, you know, like I mentioned earlier on this call, we, we want to incentivize our community to, to help um, thicken out our water books and add more liquidity. So, you know, if we can get some feedback on how many of you guys want to do this initially, then we can adjust the rewards so we can properly incentivize everyone to be on here. So, you know, the, the, give this video a like, perhaps, if you want to, if you want to uh, join in on the liquidity mining and get involved in the AMA. Um, if you're interested, and, and that way we can get a good idea of what we should be incentivizing you guys with. But, you know, I think that's, that's sort of everything we need to cover. So, Carlo, thank you very much for taking the time to, to do this video. Um, I learned a lot. Um, I'm excited to keep my Hummingbot running and see if I can spin out a profit from it. Um, and, yeah, I look, look forward to working with you guys. Great. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.